guys have a Mandalorian table uh, for Star Wars that you're working on, and <laughs> uh, yeah, ready. I got the, the background. I got the yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, tentative date sometime in uh, in spring. Uh, curious. Was the original plan to try and make it coincide with the second season that's uh, now just started streaming, or was that never even part of it? It's just more of a, a. I know sometimes you guys like to air after, or you know, put up tables after the product has actually uh, been aired. Oop, that's me. Yeah. No, I mean two things. Like Mandalorian is obviously very popular. Yeah. Uh, and I think there's going to be a long roadmap for Mandalorian just in general. Um, we wanted to, it's always, it's better for us to not try to hit big entertainment launches anymore because, uh, especially film and television, they change things at the last moment with colors or a design of an item or an object or something that's in our game that we've already fully 3d modeled and it's functional. So we've kind of separated and distanced ourselves from hitting like on a launch, but if we can be a part of something that's trending a lot of forward movement, then, uh, then we'll jump on that. There's, there's some other secrets and surprises uh, to talk about with, with the Mandalorian table specifically. But for now, we just wanted to give you guys like, hey, it's in production. Uh, here's a quick glimpse in uh, 2021. <laughs> uh, I know some one question that people have been kind of asking regarding this, especially uh, it's those that are on the Switch. They want to know, is the Mandalorian table plan to then integrate with the uh, Star Wars app that's on the Switch? Um, or is it just going to be a standalone table? Or is it going to be integrated into FX3? How's that going to work? Yeah, that's actually something I can't talk about yet. Okay. Uh, working on something uh, like the Mandalorian, um, I'm not even going to pretend or go outside of the bounds of what we've agreed upon for communication. So okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a fantastic table. Uh, everything that you would expect from, you know, that you'd expect out of the Mandalorian table is going to be there. And uh, it's really cool. So <laughs> I wish I could say more, but that those 15 minutes, that's about it. We, we, we right. won't uh, make you, uh, you know, dance on anything that uh, has licenses pulled. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Now, obviously, though, the fact that you guys are working on The Mandalorian, that brings up the idea that, hey, Zen's back at work on original tables. Uh, well over a year ago, you had mentioned that there were uh, originally two original tables that were in the works, and then suddenly there was three original tables that were in the works, and those were supposed to be released quite a while ago, too. Just kind of checking up, what's the status on uh, so those, those other originals? And are those we seeing original more originals? Are those are original, yeah, it's a pack of three. Um, they are still in production. They will release. Um, I, they're not going to come out in 2020, but they will <laughs> they will launch. And um, I really love the, the, the themes that we have associated with those. So uh, creating original tables is a priority for us, both uh, on brand, you know, licensed and unlicensed. I look back over the history of everything we've launched um, and Surprisingly, our original tables, or maybe you guys might not be surprised, our original tables, uh, well, they're very profitable for us because we don't have to pay licensing on them. Yeah. And they sell um, maybe as well as a lot of our biggest IPs. So I know there's a demand for them. And I, and I always want to have at least a new three pack of Zen originals every year. Like going forward, I committed to that, maybe more. Um, but, but that's what we're... We, we've done an incredible revamp of all of our resources for pinball, the planning, the strategic. I have a 10-year plan I just presented last week in Budapest. 2020 through 30 of what I see. Of course, after a year or two, it gets murky because we're changing technology and new platforms and who knows what else. But we got a long-term roadmap and original tables are uh, very, very important to that roadmap. Now, I know that also people are kind of wondering with these new originals, um, and I think Deep had mentioned this to us at uh, one point, but uh, they're being designed with the Williams physics in mind? Yeah. You know, it seems like the the pro physics the women's physics whatever you want to call them are the preferred uh you know play we, we've got a lot of data now especially from like our core group of players our, our you know guys who care about the game they don't care so much about the theme uh you know they want physics uh so yeah that's the, that's the cornerstone sort of physics that we are going with so let me just turn this on so the light is correct um and yeah we're, uh, you know and i'm hoping all of our older tables soon will have all those uh, physics available as well yeah, I know that's a lot of we 
we get asked that a lot. <laughs> it's like, guys, yeah. we don't know anything other than what you've heard in the podcast. So <laughs> we're sort of, a, I mean, I hate to say it, but like we're kind of a victim of our own success. We've, we've got a portfolio now of over a hundred pinball games. And so anytime you want to do something to the whole collection, it's just this massive undertaking. Right. I, mean, I don't know. And then we got to, and then it's like, well, can we monetize this again or what? Because we still got to have sell new stuff. The, the money's it's still, still got to come from somewhere, right? Like <laughs> you can't just pull it from thin air. Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, we, you know, we've always tried to give away as much as we can. And then like when there's something worth value for someone to purchase, make it a good value for them. But working on new features and constantly evolving the whole entire collection is is a lot of work. So give us a little preview. Uh, 2020 was supposed to be, uh, oh, what was the term, just wild? Or uh, uh, I can't remember what the term was you guys said. And obviously nobody predicted what was going to happen. So what's 2020 looking like for, uh, for Zen Studios and Pinball? Okay. Um, well, we still ha- we we have something that we're going to hopefully reveal this year. Um, that'll set the stage for next year. Uh, we want to go out with a bang. We know, um, you know, I, I'm I'm probably the biggest one at fault, so I'll I'll raise my hand and say, you know, we're very excited about everything we got going on, uh, and there's a lot of it, and it's just it's taking on a shape that is uh, like bigger and more exciting than what I thought it would be. And therefore we've, we've seen delays with it. We do need to be better about communicating, um, you know, what's happening and when and all that. And we're creating a format, which I think we're going to be able to, to do that and keep everybody engaged and up to speed and be very conversational. So hopefully this year we're going to, um, to already start to improve that and give you guys something and a real glimpse into what's happening uh, for next year, because uh, next year in 2022, are you will actually see the results of all the work we've been doing that we've been talking about since last year. You will absolutely see it. And it will, I hope make everybody uh, smile and, and be like, okay, now I get it. <laughs> Hopefully everyone will just forget about the 2020 and go, all right. Yeah, whatever. That was just one of those years. That was a, uh, a I'm pretty sure year. that everybody just wants to forget 2020 in general. <laughs> <laughs> they really do. <laughs> No. And I'll, I'll reiterate, Zen's commitment to pinball is not diminished by uh, by any means. It, it is bigger. Um, it is grand, more grand. Our, we have maybe some some really out there and like going to outer space type of ideas, but they're they're happening. 